Hi everyone, I am Dr. Saurabh. So we will discuss uh, DEET PG 2022 questions in ophthalmology. So with them I will also tell you which question you should have answered, which question you should have uh, left or which questions uh, were really difficult to answer. Let us see one by one. First was an image question. It was asked to identify the image which is given on the slit lamp image given. So this question was see a whitish ring which is seen. I always tell this is like a dandruff like material which can be deposited all over the eye in a syndrome known as pseudo exfoliation syndrome which can block the trabecular meshwork. If this is if this is the eyeball or the anterior part of the eyeball the pseudo exfoliation material can be deposited anywhere in the eye. Actually it is a syndrome it can be seen anywhere in the body in eye it can block the trabecular meshwork causing glaucoma that is known as a secondary glaucoma pseudo exfoliation glaucoma. It is the most common secondary glaucoma seen in old age dandruff like material deposited all over the eye uh, increase the trabecular meshwork pigmentation it blocks so it causes open angle secondary open angle glaucoma but later on it pulls the iris upwards so later on it causes secondary closed angle glaucoma as well. So it can be open and closed angle that was the answer to the question pseudo exfoliation. Washius ring you should know it's seen in blunt trauma that is a brownish ring of the iris pigment on the anterior lens capsule. This was a whitish dandruff like material that is pseudo exfoliation. Foreign body ocular trauma is not related to such type of uh, whitish uh, deposits. Okay, So that was a simple question you should have answered this question pseudo exfoliation. Second or a very simple question, everyone should have answered this question correctly, which vitamin deficiency causes this? Now this is a slit lamp image showing a bulbar conjunctiva, a whitish deposition that is vitot spot and that is seen in vitamin A deficiency, most common seen in temporal conjunctiva as compared to the nasal. So vitamin A deficiency causes a xerophthalmia, there is a staging of xerophthalmia in the X1B stage comes the vitot spot. The foamy appearance, they could have answered this foamy appearance is because of which bacteria, which organism, Cornibacterium xerosis causes a foamy appearance of this bitter spot. But here it was just to identify which vitamin deficiency, that was an easy question, everyone should have answered this question, that is vitamin A. Slightly tricky question, you, should, you could have left this question also if you don't uh, have not studied about this. So this procedure is done for, so they showed a image and the image was somewhat like this, there was some intracorneal, this is also slit lamp picture, diffuse slit lamp picture, intracorneal, intrastromal, there are some uh, procedure which is done inside the cornea, so it is related to cornea, option also was A, B, C, D also was related to cornea, keratoglobus means entire cornea is thinning and bulging, keratoconus is central cornea thinning and bulging. So this procedure is known as an intracorneal ring segments that is done in patients who are having keratoconus. So if you just see this. The treatment of choice of keratoconus, if it is a progressive keratoconus, you do a C3R procedure and if it is a non-progressive and particularly causing a vision loss, then this intracorneal segments can be put, it stabilizes the cornea that is intact, intracorneal segment, uh, intracorneal ring segments that is also known as intact or you can do a anterior lambda keratoplasty that it is in the class that is a non-progressive and if there is a vision loss. If there is a progressive keratoconus you can do a C3R procedure. C3R is corneal collagen cross-linking by riboflavin. But here was just to identify that this procedure is done in which condition this is keratoconus condition. Intax is the procedure name. So this question even if you have made it wrong that is okay out of the seven this was slightly a difficult question but if you have attended the class you have seen this picture you could have answered this question as keratoconus. But even if you didn't, doesn't matter. You can't be 100% perfect, right? Now this was also a question, diabetic retinopathy is a very important question. A diabetic patient with 6-9 vision acuity in one eye with retinal hemorrhages. Diabetic patients have, diabetic retinopathy have retinal hemorrhages, retinal exudates. If there is a neovascularization anywhere in the eye, I always say anywhere in the eye, whether it is the optic disc or elsewhere, 
or even iris rubiosis iris or angle or glaucoma it is a proliferative diabetic retinopathy stage and the primary treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy is to decrease the vegf and that is by laser of the hypoxic retina that is pan retinal photocoagulation because the entire retina is hypoxic so pan means entire retina is destroyed photocoagulation means destroying the entire retina so that you decrease the vegf because vegf is produced by the hypoxic retina so to decrease the vegf you have to destroy the hypoxic retina entire retina is hypoxic you have to destroy the entire retina but sparing the central retina that is macula why because the maximum vision comes from the macula so if you destroy the macula the vision also decreases so in pan retinal photocoagulation with the help of a uh, double frequency ndag or argon laser you photocoagulate the entire retina sparing the macula that is the concept of pan retinal photocoagulation and the basic uh, treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy secondary treatment can be anti vegf injections even if the options have anti vegf injections answer would have been pan retinal photocoagulation because anywhere if there is a new vessels in the eye or in the retina it has to be proliferative diabetic retinopathy the primary treatment is pan retinal photocoagulation you should have answered this question if you have attended and read this important topic of diabetic retinopathy correctly integrated question between the ophthalmology pediatrics and biochemistry parents brought their child to the clinic where it was found to have mental retardation skeletal muscle weakness cherry red spot this was related to ophthalmology cherry red spot differential is this is the right retina ganglionic cell is a layer of the retina which is maximum in the macula multi layered in the macula but absent in the fovea and fovula so in those condition in which the ganglion layer is having edema or there is a deposition of some substance in the ganglionic layer the ganglionic means the macula has will be having the problem sparing the fovea so this red is normal actually this yellow is a problem that is known as a cherry red spot because ganglionic cell is absent in the fovea fovula present in the macula so these edema or deposition will be there in the ganglionic layer which is present in the macula sparing the fovea and that gives appearance of cherry red spot differentials central lateral artery occlusion blunt trauma germany capital berlin's edema meem and pig gaucher gm1 gm2 gangliosides stay sacs disease all are glycos uh, all are storage disorders in which the storage product is deposited in the ganglionic layer so this option if you can see only two options have a cherry red spot one is the tay sac disease one is a gaucher so hurler hunter is out gaucher is a very rare cause but yes it is a cause biochemistry people say it's not a cause but in ophthalmology books it is given as a cause it's a controversial even if even if you are confused between tay sac and gaucher you should know pediatrics pediatrics says a mental retardation skeletal muscle weakness is a feature of tay sac disease so here comes the answer tay sac of this question so you should know what is cherry red spot they could have asked the question which layer of the retina is having problem answer is ganglionic cell they could have asked other differentials also in eye that crao blunt trauma berlin's edema here they integrated with pediatrics tay sac disease you should have answered this question correctly now the controversial question and the controversial image which was asked a middle aged female of rheumatoid arthritis see rheumatoid arthritis is a collagen vascular disorder it causes it's the most common cause of scleritis inflammation of the sclera and the following slit lamp picture was shown so scleritis can be anterior posterior anterior can be necrotizing non necrotizing anterior non necrotizing is the most common type while necrotizing can be with inflammation without inflammation now this without inflammation one is known as scleromalacia perforans the most common cause is rheumatoid arthritis yes and scleromalacia perforans as the name suggests phatega perforans means abhi phatega but misnomer hai it is rarely perforates as the name suggests malacia means melting this is scleromalacia perforans Scler sclera is having melting it looks like it will perforate but does not perforate it can lead to thinning of the sclera thinning of the sclera lined by uvea thinning of ocular tissue lined by uvea and if there is a bulging of that part that is known as staphyloma definition of staphyloma is thinning of ocular tissue lined by uvea that is staphyloma can be anterior staphyloma can be intercalary can be ciliary can be equatorial can be posterior depending on where is the staphyloma in the ciliary body area if there is a thinning of the sclera lined by uvea why this is like a blue sclera because uvea is the Uh, vascular tissue there is a bluish and there is a bulging also so now it means that the scleromalacia perforans has gone into a stage of ciliary staphyloma 
Why ciliary? Why not intercalary? Intercalary means that the limbus is involved. Inter means between cornea sclera. Limbal area is bulging, that is intercalary cephaloma. Cornea is bulging, that is anterior, is pure anterior cephaloma. Ciliary body area is bulging, that is ciliary cephaloma. This picture is of ciliary cephaloma. Equator, equator which we cannot see of course, if that is bulging, that is equatorial, posterior part of the eye is bulging, that is high myopia, that is posterior cephaloma. But here, in the picture, in the question, they have given a picture somewhat like this, somewhat like this, and students say that there was a bulging also. If there is a bulging line by uvia, it means it has gone into ciliary cephaloma stage. So the answer of this question has to be ciliary cephaloma, not scleromalacia perforans. They have given scleromalacia perforans because that is the most common cause, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is the most common cause, so that everyone should mark scleromalacia perforans just by looking. But examiners are not so giving so simple things, right? They want you to think because it is a bulging now, means it has gone into cephaloma, answer should be ciliary cephaloma. Trantas uh, dot uh, seen in uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis that is at the limbus not seen as a bulging. Ocular melanoma is a pigmented but not seen as a bulging like in this picture and not related to rheumatoid arthritis as well. Okay, so that was the answer ciliary cephaloma. Now this sympathetic ophthalmia is also an easy question. Uh, sympathetic ophthalmia, there is a penetrating trauma to one eye. There is a penetrating trauma or there is an ocular surgery to one eye involving the uveal tissue. So this is destroyed, but the body sensitizes the uveal tissue of this eye and acts against the uveal tissue of the other eye, mostly ciliary body area. So this is having panjuviatus, granulomatous panjuviatus due to trauma, this is having granulomatous panjuviatus due to type 4 hypersensory reaction, both will have panjuviatus, that was the question, panjuviatus, both eyes will have panjuviatus. This eye is exciting eye because it is starting the inflammation, this is Sympath why the name is sympathy? Because it has not done anything. This is sympathizing eye. From the trauma, lifelong risk is there to get the UVI, pan is in the other eye. But the critical period is 2 weeks to 3 months. And ciliary body is the first area to be involved. That's why ciliary body is involved, I always say in accommodation, near vision. The first symptom of sympathizing eye is loss of near vision. First sign is retrolental flare. Some talent fuke nodules are also seen under the retina. Treated is by IV steroids. The first symptom is near vision, but here the question was very simple. Pan uveitis was the answer to this question. So this was also easy question. You should have answered six questions out of the seven questions which were given in this NEET PG exam of uh, 2022 in ophthalmology segment. Never lose sight of your dreams. I always say this. You can answer, ask me any questions anytime. There are so many social media. Uh, you can ask me questions on club or my personal messenger, email or telegram. Thank you very much. Best wishes.